Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today it's ninja time and there's quite a few new cards in this list. This is a list from a donor who is a ninjas player who I played against on the channel a little while ago and asked him to send me the list and they've donated to let us have a crack at ninjas. So the new cards in this deck is Tamio, which is instead of the one mana one one that can't be blocked that we used to have in Ninja's decks. We now got this Tamiyo where we're just getting additional card draw on it instead. And our whole deck is about drawing lots of cards. This makes some sense. So we can attack with this and then we can turn it into a Yuriko or an Ingenious Infiltrator and get our card advantage in two ways there. So we get our clue and we also get the trigger from whatever Ninja we've got. So that's pretty cool. We're also running Psychic Frog because we're in blue-black and this card is absolutely bananas. And if we're drawing Ornithopters in the mid to late game, we can just throw those away into the frog and just win that way. We've got the classic suite of counter magic, the classic suite of cantrips. We've got a couple of bowmasters. This is a nice thing to bounce back as well with ninjas. And we've got a couple of merc tides, just as a really solid threat. Our interaction is fatal pushes, shoulder z edicts, murderous cuts, a new sink into stupor card, which is pretty cool. This is a bounce spell that's also a land. And we've got a brazen borrower. What you will note in this deck is we have a lot of basics, but we don't have any Wastelands. Now, the last time I played Ninjas, I played a build that didn't have Wastelands in, and I was really impressed by not having the Wastelands, weirdly, which is something that you'd normally expect to see in these sorts of decks. And it just felt really, really solid. But the meta has changed a little bit, so I'm curious to see how it goes. The donor asked me if I wanted to make any changes to this deck, and honestly, I don't have the experience with ninjas to know if we need to change anything immediately. So I just want to try it and see how it is. And then we're going to do like a deep dive afterwards and break down my thoughts on the list. Sideward wise, what have we got? Well, we got some back to basics. Makes sense considering we've got a bunch of basics. We got some Greyward Hate in Leyline as well as Dathy Voidwalker. This is something that can always connect to get us a trigger with a ninja if that's the thing we want. Got a little bit of removal and snuff out, a little bit of anti-storm hate in the Mindbreak Trap and the Fluster Storm. Powder keg for all these annoying artifacts. Dress down, we can shred some Urza Saga constructs with it, as well as just useful things like blocking a Thassa's Oracle and stuff. A little bit more removal and Hydro Blast. So kind of like a mishmash of stuff, but they're all things that you'd expect to see in a Dimir deck sideboard. And with that, I don't think we've got anything else to say. Let's just see how it feels when we get into it. So remember to like and subscribe, and let's get jamming. All right, our opener... We have an Island Pond, but not a bad way to start any game of Magic the Gathering, so I will keep this one. So ideally we like to find an Ornithopter off our Ponder, not a phrase that you expect to say particularly often, but here we are. Let's crack this. Our opponent is a Yorion deck. I'm guessing Death and Taxes because of the basic planes, but we'll see. Let's cast a Ponder. None of these are super amazing. I don't mind the Bowmasters, it gives us two bodies to attack with, and it can take out one of our opponent's things, so I think we're probably going to put... Bowmasters down, then the Brainstorm, and then we'll take this Bowmaster into our hands. So if we're expecting things like Thalia or whatever, just like your classic Death and Taxes creatures, we can ping them down with some Bowmasters. And then we can use these bodies to set up our Ingenious Infiltrator and then start drawing all the cards. I think I would quite like the Bowmasters underneath this, so I'm just going to play this Swamp for now. We do have two Underground Seas in this, but we don't have any Undercity Sewer, which is intriguing. Okay, a Sanctum Prelate. Uh, okay, I think we just want to get the body down, so we're going to play this, ping our opponent for one, and then we're going to daze this Sanctum Prelate. Then we're going to tap with both our creatures, bounce back to the Orcish Bowmasters, and get some card draw going. Like, this is probably going to name one and jam up our cantrips and stuff, but just keeping the board clear means that we get to start going into the well of card advantage. And if we're drawing extra cards and we can draw into a Psychic Frog, then we've got a really good outlet for these extra cards. Bowmasters goes back. Infiltrator comes in. They could have a Solitude, but if they pitch two cards for this, that's not the end of the world. Our deck is all about grinding the card advantage. We're not a million miles away from a Merc Tide either. Yep, yeah, they do have the Solitude. So we're going to lose our Ingenious Infiltrator. But we got a Flicker Wisp and a Solitude out of our opponent. And we've got a full grip of cards here while our opponent's down to just three. Now they do have a Yorion, so they've technically got a secret additional card tucked away there. A Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. There's no way they're going to block because they know we have the Orgish Bowmasters. 
So I got called a complete. So we do want to find an answer for our opponent's Stoneforge Mystic. So I imagine we're probably going to be brainstorming here. Let's get this on the go. A Shouldered Edict. That does what we need it to do. How many lands do we realistically want? I do like a lot of our cards here. I don't think we need double Bowmaster. I like everything else we've got going on. So I'm just going to put these two back here. We'll play this. Crack this. Get an island. Because we have lots of blue blue costs. We Shoulders Edict now. Then we get to attack for one. Now we've got the Force of Will ready for when our opponent reaches for a Yorion. Or if they play something else that we have to answer. A Recruiter of the Guard. This is an awkward one. We have the ping that can just hit this down and then counter whatever comes out of it. I think that's okay. It can be a little bit risky to do this. Okay, another Stoneforge. That's fine. Like I said, we can count on that on the way down. They know we've got this Bowmasters to ping at them. We want to keep this body out of play because we don't want them to be able to blink it and gain more value. If they had some mana open and we had to worry about Ephemerate, then I'd be more inclined to force of all that. But knowing that we have the clean answer as well as the ability to either play a Tamiyo here and just get some more card advantage. I don't hate that. I think that's probably slightly better than the Ponder here. So we could flip the Tamiyo next turn if we crack a clue and cast a Ponder. And then it'll flip into this Planeswalker, which plus ones to minus one enemy stuff for a turn. And then we can regrowth an instant, which you don't really want to do. Or you can draw half your library when you get to seven. Uh, they really want to deal with this. I think that's fine. We've we've got a Mertide Regent. Thalia. Do I care about Thalia here? I don't think I do. I think that's fine. We're just going to play this this Mertide and ride this to victory. Save our Force of Will for the thing that matters. It's going to be one shy of maximum, but this should be more than enough to get this game won, I would imagine. We've got Force of Will, Pitch Force of Will is most likely what we're going to have to do. But that gives us more food for the Ponder, uh, sorry, for the Murderous Cut, which then allows us to grow this Merc Tide to guarantee a two-turn clock. Blue-Black is a pretty powerful colour combination in Legacy right now. And we're not necessarily doing anywhere close to the most powerful Blue-Black deck either. A Stoneforge Mystic. I don't want this to resolve. I think we're going to pitch this Ponder. No, we pitched the Force. I think the Force is right, actually. I like that more than pitching the Ponder here. Ponder being two mana is kind of annoying. Solitude. Pitching a Plow. Okay. I'm going to take out our Merc Tide. An Ephemerate here would be a problem, but they've only got one mana and they have a Thalia, so this is just not going to do anything there. All right. So our opponent's got Cauldra and one card in hand. They can't really attack. They need to have this back on blocks. It'd be a pretty good time to draw something like a Psychic Frog. Another Bowmasters would be fantastic as well. We just ping down the Stalia. Hmm. That is kind of an awkward one, isn't it? Right, we can maintain our Force of Will, but just keep parity. Is keeping parity a good place to be for us right now? Or do we need to fire off this Ponder? I think I like the Ponder here. We'll leave up blue, because that can cast Tamiyo. Or a Daze. I like the Tamiya quite a bit here. Okay, I think we'll bury the days. And then we'll keep this Tamiya. I think we are going to go Shields down on this Force of Will. We just need to get a little bit more card advantage going. We're kind of uh, at parity, but our board is slightly better than our opponents. A Sky of Apparition? Sure. What would you like to hit? Is it going to be a Tamiya? It is a Tamiya. So we've got a land underneath, which we can murder as cut with. So underneath this is a daze that we do not want. So we're going to... Like the daze can be food for the force of will, but then what are we doing for a turn? We're just going to hold open this murderous cut. There's a wasteland. That's not going to impact us. A stoneforge mystic. All right. Well, they're going to put alongside this cauldron. A lion sash. That's something, isn't it? And they're just straight up playing the sash out. There's quite a lot of food for it in there. But do we have to kill this Stoneforge? Because of the Thalia, we're kind of incentivized to cast this Murderous Cut now. So we're going to get Swamp here. Then we cut this. Get rid of the two lands. We can pay for Thalia cost with Delve. We just don't want this Cauldra coming into play. Alright, deck. We need to draw something tasty here. 
That's not very tasty. We can leave that in hand for brainstorm purposes. I think our opponent is turned the corner against us now. A Caracas. That makes it's going to be very difficult for us to actually permanently remove this Thalia. I right, just put Yoran to hand, which gives them a really good engine where they can just play and bounce, play and bounce, play and bounce. So finding a blue card here would certainly help with matters. But then we're still going to be looking for some more action after that because we don't have any right now. Our opponent's getting feisty over there. We've got to take it. We don't have any, any other options. They're also going to be growing the Sash. I could trade both of these bodies for the Sash. Is that something I want to do? I think it is. Because this can just get out of hand. And they've given us a chance to actually just deal with this. With this card that's not really doing anything. It's not roadblocking our opponent because they've got first strike. And we get to actually trade away a larger body. That seems all right to me. Right, getting rid of their solitude. So the reason they're doing this is in case we're playing something like reanimate. So we can't just bring back their solitude. Which would be a, a lovely play that I would like to make. But we're not that sort of deck. All right, so we got the trade off here. We've got some life to work with. If we find a blue card, we can ignore the Orion by just countering it. If we don't find a blue card, then what are we doing? All right, we found the blue card. We might even get off just playing the days as a days here. A flagstones, I guess that's off now. Yep. Unfortunately, we're in a position where we, uh, where our opponent doesn't have to do anything. And they're going to think, what is in our hand that we're not playing at this point? Are they just going to go straight for it, are they? Okay, I will take this. Don't want to deal with a massive 4-5. So our opponent's got one card in hand, it's Cauldra. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Uh, six lands, sorry. So another land gives them Cauldra, which is obviously not ideal for us. Fatal Push. I guess we're just sitting on this Fatal Push. It's a land, not a land. But that means our opponent's got Spell, which is also bad for us. Like, we could push this Skyclap Apparition, but I don't think it's worth it. I think we can just take the damage for another turn or two. There's no point trying to push this Thalia. If our opponent casts... Okay, that's a great draw for us. We don't care about that. Our opponent finally bricked. So we don't care if our opponent plays a Cauldra immediately. Like, obviously, it's bad for us and we have to answer it. But we have the ability to kill the Thalia. I think this is a Brainstorm situation like we've got this one i thought we didn't really care about fail push fatal push and a Eurico. that the Eurico does do stuff here because we can play out the ornithopter so we can put the Eurico on top so we can put it go like ponder Eurico. if our opponent draws a land how in trouble are we hmm. maybe it's the push and i kind of want to keep this push to to deal with the Thalia if our opponent does make the, the Cauldra. The other option here is to put back both pushes and play the Ornithopter. That allows us this turn to ponder to try and find an answer to the Cauldra. What is our actual answer to the Cauldra? Uh, Days isn't going to work under the Thalia, but we've got Slink into Stupor, which will, and we've got Brazen Borrower in our deck and a Shoulders Edict. That's quite a few things. But that does involve us taking hits from these. That is a really tough call. Uh, I think I'm going to opt to get rid of the Thalia. If our opponent plays a Cauldra. We at least get like a little consolation prize. Which helps us cast the Ponder more cheaply next turn. They got a land over there. They do not appear to have a land. I think it is worth... Uh, we can only... Actually we can only push... We can only push the Thalia here doesn't really do what we need to. We could just push this to bounce it at end step. So that we can get a ponder off. Oh, they do have the land there. And they're not casting the cauldra. Even though they have the land. That's very interesting. Alright, I think we have to bounce this Thalia. I hate it, but I think this is what we're doing here. We want to turn without the Thalia so we can cast our ponder. Yep. Just gives them a choice between... Actually, they, they can play both because of the Ether Vile next turn. But it gives us a turn off where we get to ponder and try and find an answer to the Cauldra. Which is the pressing concern right now. Uh, force of Will. We can Force of Will the Cauldra through Athalia. If we put this on top, then the Force, and then this. We say no to this. We know both of our opponent's hat cards in hand. 
Their Caracas is tapped, so we get the hit with the Euro Cohen. This deals damage. Then we flip the Force of Will, hit them for another five. And now our opponent's kind of got this pressure on their Caracas. And we'll play out this Ornithopter. There's a Fatal Push on top of our library. We've got the ability to stop this Cauldra. This is a really interesting game. Death and Taxes games quite often tend to be because it's sort of fair magic. And we're not just a matchup that's going to fold to enough lock pieces. It's kind of like going to be back and forth. All right. A batter skull. That is also a pain. Uh, I guess we're going to counter spell this. Because they can reset that over and over again. So now they're going to put the Thalia in. So they've got the Caracas for our Yuriko. But because we can attack with both, they don't really have a good time to do that. So we will get to pop this off. We, yeah, we get to attack with both here. So Fatal Push has some good synergy with Ninjutsu stuff. We do need to watch for our Life Turtle. So they could block with a Thalia and then bounce their own Thalia. And they can target this with a Caracas, then we can kill it with the Fatal Push. The issue with doing this is that this gives our opponent lethal on the backswing. This isn't going to work. Because we haven't got the right number of stuff. Yeah, we just died to the Cauldra because we're hellbent. Yeah, we need our opponent not to block there. Okay, so this is the matchup where I'd like some more removal. Removal was good. Let's have that. I don't hate the Dowthy Void Walker as a way to just constantly peck away our opponent and get through their like horde of blockers. But they don't really use their graveyard, so it's not the most exciting use either. Uh, the dress down is pretty good. Stop some horrible, annoying, bouncy stuff. I think it's probably just the three cards that come in here. I think the, the big clutch turn of that game was where our opponent had the the second Solitude to fire off. That really hurt. So if we're keeping this in, what are we taking out? I think we need to keep things that... like I like the Bow Masters for killing Thalia, because Thalia is a bit annoying for us when we're trying to cantrip. I like having answers to the... Germ tokens here. I don't like powder keg. It doesn't answer the big problem of the cauldron germ. This is indestructible. I think we might be boarding down on Yuriko because our opponent is a Caracas deck. I think we do want to have our forces. Is Days that good against our opponent's deck? I think it probably is still. So what is the cut here? We could just go lower on Yurikos, but if we're going lower on Yurikos, we probably don't want all these Ornithopters either. Something like this. Like we can still just throw Ornithopters back in the deck with a Brainstorm or chuck them into a Psychic Frog. That's perfectly reasonable. Uh, the Curse of the Basics here. I would like to have access to some Black Mana. I don't think I can keep this one. It's just slightly too awkward. This is a better hand. We can keep this. Uh, I think I'm going to put back the Murderous Cut because it's just going to cost more mana to use. We can find that later. We've got other removal. Whereas Dress Down is a nice, unique effect. I yeah, kind of want an under city sewers in this deck, I think. I'll play out an island and pass. So if you see like a Mother of Runes, we just paint down the Bowmasters. Misty Rainforest. That can get our underground sea. So the, the reason to play this is so that we have the Brainstorm option if our opponent doesn't play anything we need to interact with. It does mean we have to get a non-basic because we can't fetch our swamp here. All right, let's Brainstorm. Uh, not really what I'm after, is it? Uh, so we put back a land and a land here. So now we can get an island because we've got the swamp coming, so we don't have to play into non-basics. Do I want to brainstorm here? Or do I want to hold up, sink into stupor? I'm going to brainstorm. See more cards. Oh, dear. Okay, so I guess we're putting back uh, the non-fetches because we have two fetches in hand. Let's crack this. Let's go and get our basic swamp. And then we'll pass holding up Dress Down, Orchid Bowmasters, or Brainstorm if something requires it. So we didn't see anything like the Falia, which is the, the little dog. Castle Harden Vale. I haven't seen that in a hot minute. Uh, Ends the battlefield tapped. You control planes. Create a 1 1 human for 4 mana. Alright. That's pretty good against what we've got going on here. However, we have an Orchid Bowmasters. Let's ping down this Labyrinth guy. All right, they didn't have any way of saving that, so that's quite nice. Looks like a plow could be in our future here. 
A day's isn't the worst. Do some more brainstorming. Just a couple more lands. I don't really, don't really need these. Uh, we can send these one back. Place one out. Go to attacks. Hold up days. Sink into stupor. Other days. We're not really winning the game right now. We're just kind of plodding along. A flicker wisp. This can flipper, flicker out our orcish bowmasters if we want. If they want, sorry. This doesn't target our own thing. We could play a dress down to stop this from doing anything. We could double daze this. This is just to save an orc army. Though. That doesn't feel amazing. No, I think we just let them take out our orc army here. Now we've got more bowmasters. So we'll crack this in our upkeep. Which is better for the purposes of revolt. Let's go and get a swamp, I think. All right, the game has changed. We will play out Psychic Frog. Arguably the best creature in Legacy. Right, they're coming in for the business. We could jump our frog and discard some cards to pump it, but that's not necessary right now. Our opponent is holding up a 1-1 one, one soldier being made off of the castle Arden Vale. I would like to remove three lands to get some flying going. And the old froggy. A Ganjo. This will deal four damage, so we need to discard some cards. So we'll discard a Yuriko. We'll discard a Dress Down. And then I'll discard... Is it Sink into Stupor or is it one of the Dazes? This is more flexible, but... The dazes are kind of bad on their own. But we can nail a source of power shares if our opponent has one. I'm going to get rid of the sink. Right, so this will put this on one health left. Do we just get to bash them for four? And draw a card? We do. Gross stuff right there. Absolutely gross. Yeah, Psychic Frog being immune to removal that's damage based is pretty gross. A recruiter of the guard. Sure. Not when we get to days. Let's see what they pull out. They've still got this urine, so they could go and put the urine to hand and have a white card for something like a solitude here. That's going to end very poorly for our opponent because of these dazes in our hand. A Stoneforge Mystic. Let's say no to this one. I'm going to pay. And I will do another daze. Okay, so there is a Yorion in our future, potentially. Oh, they're still coming in with the Flicker Wisp. All right, I would like to exile three cards. We get rid of Creature, Artifact, and... No matter. We just want to give our Creature Flying. Attack with both, because if they trade the Recruiter off here, that's good for us. Because we don't want the Recruiter to get flickered by the Yorion here. A Brainstorm. It would be rude not to cast this, looking for something to deal with this Yorion. Snuff out... Shorazidic Ponder. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff here. So I think we're looking at Shorazidic, then the Ponder here. Not sure if I want to, wanted to play the Tamiya or to leave it in hand for the Psychic Frog. He's not going to block very well. All right, they put your own to hand. I'm going to force our opponent into making some decisions soon. Fire from these Edicts. Non token creature, please. So having the Tamiya in hand allows us to use this Ponder to dig for a counter spell if we need to. Like a force. Uh, I would like to jump. The reason I want to jump here is so that the 1-1 one, one token can't block it. So then we draw the Shoulders Edict that we know is on top. We can cast a Ponder. We've got a blue card if we find a force. We didn't find a force. Uh, we can find a Ponder... That digs us one more card deeper, but I think I'd rather just any order and shuffle because we've only got one more blue mana left. And Orcish Bowmasters is a pretty reasonable one. I think this means we're going to play the... Does this mean we're going to play the Tamiyo? Yeah, I think it's worth playing the Tamiyo this time. We don't have a Ponder now to dig for a Force of Will for the turn the Yorion comes. We're just going to rely on our Shoulders Edict. Yep, you can bounce that. That's fine. They spied our plan. This means that it's going to be Difficult for them to do Yorion things. So this doesn't blink anything. And now the Caracas is going to be a bit pressured here. Which Blessed Meadow? 
tapped. Didn't think our opponent wanted to go to two there. Our opponent's got one card in hand. Oh, sorry, two cards in hand. So they could have a solitude here. But I think you'll play the solo. Mm, would you? Mm. We found a pretty interesting card here. If we attack with both creatures, they have to block the frog or they die. Do we need to ponder here? Or is it just nice to have both of these up? We get more cards with our ponder in a sec. I think we're going to attack with both creatures here. You've got to block the frog. So they can crack us this, but then we can just shoulder his edict out of the way. Because they're not going to want this to just die here. Get out of here. So we can hold up bow masters, or we can cast a ponder. Oh, there's not a lot of time left on our clock, actually, there. Been thinking out my lines a bit too much, perhaps. We can certainly win a game in about four minutes, though. But I've, been, I've just been enjoying these games, so I'm more than happy to keep playing them. Even if it doesn't quite go all the way because of our clock. Alright, our opponents. Let us go to the next game. Uh, I like how I've sideboarded here. Do I need to get more aggressive, though? Because of the amount of time left on the clock? I think the answer to that is yes. So I think we want these. Probably brought out a Yuriko and a Tamiya. Because these aren't great with our... But then what are we doing with these th ornithopters? They look bad then, don't they? All right, I think this will do. Kind of just regular good stuffs. Uh, we've got a brainstorm. We've got a fatal push, which is certainly useful. Uh, I believe in this hand. We've got two draw steps and a brainstorm to find a second land. We get to play on basics. So we don't care about our opponent having wasteland. We've got ourselves a force of will now. Should have played out that ornithopter. I'm just playing a bit fast and loose. Thalia. Uh, this is too irritating for us. Let's just say no to this for now. We'd love to have a surveil land here, but it's not the case. Island. Get swamp. Play the frog. See, now we have something to pitch to the frog. So maybe we're right not to play out the Ornithopter. Stoneforge Mystic. Sure, we've got fatal push for this. Call to complete. Yep, our opponent just wants to get this game over and done with. It's a perfectly fine way to play the game. Kill this. Attacks. We connect. Oh wow, that's bad news to our opponent that we get to connect there. Let's cast a brainstorm. Found another land. I like the frogs. Not big into the ornithopter. Uh, although, yeah, not big into the ornithopter. Do we need all of these frogs? Probably not. Do something like this. Go and get ourselves an island. Play the Tamiya. We're going to have to fix our opponent's turns a little bit here because we need the time. Alright, so they can bounce our Tamiya. Recruiter of the Guard. Yep. What fresh hell is this going to be? Skyco Apparition. Alright. Yep, they're bouncing Tamiya now. Let's give it up for him flying. Go attacks. Let's get rid of Tamiya. Let's get a little bit more damage on the go. And Ponder looking for an answer for this Skyclave. Shoulder's Edict sinking to super. Uh, we can. We can tempo them out a little bit here. Kind of want two of these cards, but we can't get two of them if we're going to do that. Right now, we'll just do it like this. Say no. Play this out. Then play out the other frog. Wasteland, that doesn't do anything. Sky of Apparition, sure. We're going to lose a frog. Presumably the larger one. We've got a removal spell on top. I'm okay with having that. Mother of Runes. Sacrifice creature. Probably going to be a recruiter here. Get on the next card down. So let's just go and get ourselves a swamp now. Uh, I would like some flying. Would I like flying or would I like to force a chump? I think I'll force a chump here. Just get some stuff off the board. They might not go for it though. They're not going for it. Wow. Okay. We just get a free card. Uh, an island that allows us to have this sink into stupor. I don't think we can cast this turn. Which means we're not allowed to F6 our turn. We're getting pretty close to high casting that Cauldra. It's not an issue for us when we've got the Brazen Borrower. However, the Brazen Borrower is less useful if our opponent's got the Mother of Runes. We need to use both of these spells to do it. Which we can do. I don't think we're going to have time to win this game. And I think because of that, we need to just play this as a threat. Just reach for the sky. There is some genius in Just need to try and get enough damage going. 
Okay, force of will is good. What does this do? Uh, stone fire. Let's just say no to this. It does a bunch of stuff. I don't want to have to deal with that. Just cast us ponder. We didn't really have that much time to mess around with this. Uh, okay, a Merc Tide is very good here. Is it though? Probably doesn't hurt. Uh, so we'll cast this Merc Tide. One, two, three, four. Get rid of these. Mm -hmm. Wax our three cards. This will grow our Merc Tide. Need to yield some triggers. And a psychic frog, and then we have six or ten. Sixteen seconds. We've got lethal damage next turn. It's gonna be tight. Yorion into play. Sure. Uh, they can sky apparition take out the frog. Uh, we murderous we can't murderous cut this. Uh, actually no we can because we can murderous cut and then sink into stupor in response and then attack for lethal. Oh solitude as well. That's a real pain. Gonna be a little bit shy, I think, here. So we go stinking to super on this. No, I don't have enough mana, do I? No, we don't have, we don't have quite enough time there. We're slightly under the gun a little bit. Uh it won't let me draw any more cards to see what would have happened, but yeah, there's a lot of intricate plays in this deck, and I wanted to talk through them all for you for the quality of content. And we didn't quite get there in time. It would be interesting to see how this would pan out with a couple more turns. We were kind of uh, close here. Because we're going to clear this off the board. We're going to bash for five here. This might get chumped. It might not get chumped. But we bash for three. We probably do win this game if we have another 60 seconds. But our opponent only needs one more removal spell. And then the whole game flips. So, yeah. An interesting match though. I thought the games were really fun. Let's go to round two. Our opening hand. We have all these lovely basics. But they do come at a cost sometimes. We're going to have to mulligan this. Alright, Sink of the Super is going to have to do a little bit of work for us. I think we're supposed to lead off on the Swamp. Because our Ponder is going to be our Force of Will food. The Sink is going to be our blue source. We don't want to get wastelanded. We throw away an Ornithopter. We need the Eurico to get our engine going. So we lead off on the Swamp, putting back the Ornithopter from the Mulligan. That should pay the Swamp. Play Ornithopter, and we pass. Bog at bog. All right, our friend's up to no good. That's usually what that means. A grief. Uh, I guess we can't spell this and hope our opponent. So I'm expecting our opponent to be oops all spells. The reason we can't spelling this is so they think we have another count spell and maybe wait another turn to have another crack at our hand. All right, we may have bought ourselves some time. Let's tackle this. Got some command ninjas who go in. We play Yonathopter. We bought ourselves a draw step. And then also an additional hit from our Yuriko, which is like another draw step. I have to imagine if our opponent kept seven cards, they can just send it. Okay, so they pitched it under seat form to the grief. Now they're gonna see that we don't have anything, and they're calling our bluff. But we did at least buy ourselves a chance to maybe find some interaction if our opponent didn't have more protection or whatever. Alright, so they're gonna cast Cunning the Weak on this. Which is another reason it's worth counterspelling the grief against the Neutral Spells deck because they might be relying on that for mana. So they're going to cast the Balustrade Spire. They're going to flip. Okay, the Intercity Informer. They're going to sacrifice it, target themselves, flip their graveyard. Uh, sorry, flip their library into the graveyard. And we get to see what they find. So they're going to pull out four Nark Amoebas. They're going to Dread Return. I'm just having a look at the list. This looks like the straight up mono black build. Yeah, I think I played this on the channel as well. All right. That's A-OK -okay with me. So, as you can imagine, I would like some copies of Leyline of the Void and Dalthy Voidwalk here. That feels like a good place to be. Flutter Storm does do stuff against our opponent, but not as often as you, as you would like. Dress Down is OK. It can stop their creature coming in. It can stop their... Um, Thassa's Oracle win. It can do a fair bit. Mindbreak Trap... I'm not big on Mind Break Trap. It doesn't feel great in this matchup, but maybe it's one of those things we just have to reach for. Flusterstorm, we can count on rituals. It does something, right? That's the plan. Our opponent also has a Char Belcher pivot, which might be worth considering as well. So, what do we have here? 
the Charlie Belcher Pidget makes pivot, sorry, makes the powder keg better because they'll have artifacts like chrome mocks and stuff, and then we can blow this up to hit them, but I don't think that's good enough. Uh, the Orcish Bowmasters doesn't really do anything. Shoulders Edict doesn't do anything. The Fatal Pushes are rarely ever going to do anything. We want our counter spells. Our bounce spells for Char Belcher are actually okay here. We probably don't have the time to be pondering around, right? We are blue cards. We've got loads of blue cards in our deck. We're not going to have the time to ponder. We're going to be holding up like Fluster Storms or whatever, playing Tamiya so we've got stuff to start making roads into the game. I think this is fine. I'm curious if they're on a slightly different cyber plan. I've seen a few varying cyber plans that look quite good. Uh, we have a Leyline in the Void. That is actively where we want to be. So one ley line, uh, one plan to beat Leyline from Usual Spells that I've seen recently is people running three Thassa's Oracle in the sideboard. And the idea is you just end up with more Thassa's Oracle so you can still mill your library and go that way. That looks really good in the blue-black builds especially. Uh, it's a pretty good time to be an Usual Spells player now that you can run up to 12 of each colour land that isn't actually a land in your deck that comes in untapped. By multi, multi 5 we now have a ley line. That's always a good place to be against Usual Spells. Let's go and get ourselves. Uh, we don't really care about what sort of land we're getting so we might as well get the dual land here because our opponent isn't going to impact our mana base. Alright, they're just scooping it up. Maybe they didn't board in their uh, alternate plan. Alright, we're just going to go again. So the mono black build struggles a little bit to answer the ley line. So it usually builds into like char voucher. I quite liked building into like just good stuff, like um, like good mono black things, because your opponent's going to board out all their removal. That's Mulligan. Got a ley line. We've got the best threat going. Uh, I guess the ingenious infiltrator can go here. I don't think we're going to go to time this round at least. So they can't do their their quickest kill. So they're going to have to play some stuff out, possibly then into a char belch. It's, it's within the realms of possibility they can win the game. But okay, what are we looking at? It's probably just going to be Island Ponder, isn't it? Right, we drew another Psychic Frog. It's time to ponder. Uh, no, we don't want any of these. Just go any order and shuffle. An Ornithopter. That is just going to get pitched to our Psychic Frog, isn't it? Going to make a large frog. We're going to draw extra cards. We're going to hopefully get there with this daze. The Chromox. Just going to imprint something. They could just be on playing bad creatures and beating down. An Undercity Informer. We will clock our opponent before they clock us because... If you haven't read Psychic Frog, boy howdy, is it good. We're going to play this, keeping our Prismatic Vista in hand for future brainstorms. Boy howdy, does Psychic Frog clock. So our opponent can't attack us now. Feed the swarm on our Leyline of the Void. That is a bit of a doozy for us, isn't it? I don't believe we can win now. So they can crack this under City Informer. And then just do their full-on combo here. Yeah. I guess we should have counterspelled the Undercity Informer. I was kind of holding out for Char Belchers or whatever. But yeah, our opponent just outplayed us there by their sequencing a little bit. Yeah, GG's opponent. And that's the match. Let's go to round three. All right. Uh, we've got Tamiyo into Yuriko. Let's get some legendary stuff on the go. Undercity Sewers. Here comes Tamiyo, and we've got a daze from our opponent. So the next turn is most likely going to be a cantrip turn. There's that Undercity Sewers again, our opponent's getting a lot of value out of that one. Our opponent's giving me the impression that they're some sort of rescaminator deck. He's obviously not ideal for us. Are we casting the Brainstorm here instead? I think we are. Now we've got a fetch land. Okay, I'm happy to play this Tamiyo. I quite like a lot of these cards. I don't think we need this island. I want the swamp. Maybe put the sink and stupor back. And play this out. Get another island. Play the Tamiyo. Opponent doesn't quite know what we're up to yet. Okay, they wanted to counter it the first time. but And they did. 
but they didn't manage to have a counter for the second time. I'm going to see like Psychic Frog here. We are going to see the Psychic Frog. I will fight over this. It's too strong to let it be. All right, so they're going to force the pull back. This will come into play, and then we'll shoulder Z it to out of play. All right, let's start yielding to our triggers to make sure that we don't have to keep clicking through them like we did in the first round. So we've got a card advantage engine online. We can also brainstorm if we want to flip the Tamiyo. What I think our opponent's answer to a flip Tamiyo is, it's probably just a Bowmaster, uh, not Bowmasters, a um, killing it or brazen borrowing it. Let me just attack the Tamiyo here. Our opponent doesn't have removal for this, otherwise they would have removed it. Uh, would I like to get the Yuriko or the Ingenious Infiltrator? I think the one that does the most damage. If our opponent's got some reanimation spells in their deck, I want to reduce their life total. Let's Tamiyo. So what we're trying to dodge here is our opponent just going into and reanimate here. So I can control of Kazuji, and that I can live with. I've got Underground Sea over there. Cracking their Polluted Delta as well. Getting an Undercity Sewers. More Selection. And they binned off an Underground CT. Four mana. For a hard cast Grief. So they're probably going to take our Brainstorm, I would imagine. So it does look like a full-on re build. It could just be regular scam, though. That is a possibility. Yeah, they took the Brainstorm. So we can attack with the Tamiyo. Get on the clue. If we can start cracking into these clues, we'll be having a great time. Let's get the old ninjutsu going. So this will trigger itself and the Ingenious Infiltrator. Oh, that was quite a nice hit. Um, I guess we just continue the plan. They can't really attack because we'll get two triggers off each one and that could be pretty disastrous for our, for our opponent. But the Tamiyo is just going to keep churning away. You're right, our opponent's had enough. Love it. So our opponent is a graveyard deck. I don't know how deep into the graveyard are. they are. So there's an argument for having the Ley Lines in. I guess we can always pitch into Frog or Brainstorm them, so... I just don't want to get blown out by the big scary play that they can do. I don't mind having more removal. I don't really want to be playing Force of Wills against our opponent who's just going to be like messing our hand up all the time. Fluster Storm, a nice one for one spell is where I like to be. 63 cards in our deck right now. Uh, the days looks a lot weaker on the draw. We can reassess that on the play. Alright, I get this a well. We don't have immediate graveyard hate, but our hand is okay. We can answer a grief. We've got Bowmasters, which is pretty hot in the matchup where our opponent's casting a bunch of cantrips. Just an Undercity Sewers. All right. So we probably have to play out the Polluted Delta. I imagine this is the turn where we immediately draw the Ley Line. We did not. Okay. This is probably better than getting the... Just holding up the Fluster Storm, I think. Let's just play this. Because if this gets in play, it can give us Ingenious Infiltrator on turn two, and then we can just start pouring cards all over the shop. All right. A Surveil, this means we're not getting reanimated on this turn. A Brainstorm into the bin, and a Ponder. Sure. So now we're debating whether or not we're holding up the Fluster Storm, or we're just getting the Ingenious Infiltrator and start getting more cards. So we do want to start clocking our opponent's life total. Underground C. That means if we hold up Bowmasters this turn, next turn we can Ingenious Infiltrators and Flusterstorm. So we can just kind of hold our options open. We can always just clack, crack this clue as well if we would like. We've got some stuff going on. The clue token should also trigger the Fatal Push as well. And Entomb. Let's just say no to this. Because once this is... Once they put their big monster in the graveyard, they can reanimate it with any spell they draw. So we just want to keep the big monster out of there. All right, it didn't pay and then days. That's fortuitous for us. And then a ponder from our opponent. So now we have no reason to hold up the mana. Psychic frog, though. That is... That is a very tempting one. I think I just want to get the... The Ingenious Infiltrator down there. This gets us a card immediately. Because there's more ways of interacting with our opponent, potentially. 
Davil Walker. I'm certainly looking forward to having that in play next turn. Hopefully that won't be too late, though. They're not interacting with our Tamiya. A Brainstorm. Yeah, it would have been nice to have a Bowmaster in play. But just getting us more cards is probably a fine way to play this one. Fatal Push on the Tamiya. Yep. So I think if we can shut off our opponent's like spooky graveyard lines with the Douthi, then I'm going to feel relatively comfortable. Like, not super comfortable, but comfortable enough. The question is, is the Douthi the bait spell or not? Like, we can't really play around days is the problem. And our opponent has just brainstorms, so they're going to have all sorts of cards over there. So I think we're just going to attack with our infiltrate and see what happens. If we get another card, then great. Let's go for the Douthi. We can't try and bait this one out first. Oh wow, we're just, we're just in. Would I like to have a Psychic Frog? Yes, because that gives us more cards next turn. So they can daze this, but at least their graveyard isn't going to do anything scary. And now we get a daze underneath our Douthi, if that's the thing we care about for later. Like We already have a Psychic Frog in the form of Ingenious Infiltrator. Yes, it doesn't grow, but it does start off as a 2-3. And it gets to attack on turn 2 sometimes. Under City Sewers, yep, more value off of the Surveil for our opponent. They put an engine in explosives. Okay, they're going to reanimate our Psychic Frog. We have a, a kill spell for this. I think we'll attack here. See what our opponent wants to discard, if anything. They have to discard if they want to keep this alive. So we can get a little bit more value. And we're just trying to grind the value here. They've exiled a grief. Let's try and push this. A force of Will. Pitching Brazen Borrower. Okay. So we're going to lose our Infiltrator here. But we could just draw a bunch more cards. What is in the void? Next time. We don't really want those cards just yet. So we could flip in an Infiltrator and draw two cards. Because they will, they will see each other. We could flip in the Yuriko and draw more cards. Let's get this in. So now if we draw a removal spell that we can actually use on this guy. We did not draw a removal spell that we can use on that guy. But we did draw a good spell. And we can also chump block the Psychic Frog with our Ornithopter. And then we can crash in and put an Ingenious Infiltrator into play. And get four triggers if they attack us. And we've still got two clue tokens that we can pop whenever we like. Uh, under the bus you go. With our opponent's one card in hand. We may never know. All right, we can go attacks here. Get another clue. Ninjutsu. That's a lot of triggers. All right, our opponent's just had enough. Uh, yeah, we absolutely outcard drew our opponent. We didn't get killed by their big scary thing, and our one interaction for that in the Flutterstorm was enough. Uh, I think because we're playing on a very similar axis to our opponent with, like, you know, black blue good stuff for the most part and our opponent's not as big on removal as we are it means if we can ignore the graveyard side of our opponent's deck then we're okay and that's what happened there so let's go to round four island ponder is not a bad way to be but we do have a lot of lands here and we don't have any surveil lands i think we can do better than this yeah this looks much better we can keep this we can bin off one of these cards I think it's going to be the Yuriko. Right, we want to keep the Tamiyo to put in a ninja. We could put, we could do this and then just keep the other ninja and just not have the frog. That seems wild, but the synergy is strong. I'm going to go for it. Right, just the ability to have multiple ninjas triggering off each other is so tempting. Right, we're having to work a little bit harder than just playing a frog, but the payoff is substantial because we get to stack multiple instances of triggers instead of drawing two cards if we had frog and infiltrator we would then get to draw four cards now this does kind of rely on the tamio surviving but we have a daze to help that polluted delta from our opponent it's being cracked a tundra it's gonna be a plow just a straight up plow no i want a tamio to stick around oh they had a daze too all right, so we've kind of just set everything back to square one again. We traded two for two. We've both bounced our lands. And now we're back to this. I don't think we're going to need this 
Prismatic Vista, but I will play it just in case we need to fail push something. So now we're in a situation where keeping the frog would have been better. Maybe it was a touch greedy, but you came in to watch ninjas, not psychic frogs. So I'm trying to deliver for you. So is our opponent a Dreadnought deck? That would be my guess. I think that is probably the most fun way to play Tundras and Swords to Plowshares and Dazes right now. A Brainstorm. Very bold brainstorming like this when we could potentially have a Bowmasters, but Prismatic Vista Island probably isn't giving massive Bowmaster vibes to our opponent. But the fact they've shown us they're willing to brainstorm like that means that maybe we can get them later down the line. No surveil lands, not that we could fetch them anyway because it's a Prismatic Vista. A polluted delta. Well, well, well. Let's get an island and a swamp. Let's cast your friend of mine, Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow. Just a fair three mana, one three. They now probably understand why we were so big on trying to keep our Tamiyo around because we kind of needed the enabler for the ninjutsu. Now we're just on casting three mana, one power guys. So this could be a dress down at end step. And then they could untap just the Bowmasters. All right, I can live with that. I'm playing some sort of like Esper control slash tempo deck. Like the, the days are kind of showing tempo, but a lot of control decks these days have tempo elements in them. Oh, yuck. That's horrible for us. Yep. I think our opponent is well on their way to winning this one. Yeah, if we'd have kept the Psychic Frog instead of the Yuriko... Then I think we would be in a better spot. Okay, I'm just going to play the Yuriko out here. Am I? No. I'll play out the Infiltrator. It's more likely to be able to fight in combat. Because it's got that extra point of power. And that also means it has the right amount of power to finish off this fairy next turn. If we can get a clear shot at it using our Fatal Push. All right, then plus Ned Teferi. We've got to watch out for things like Prismatic Ending as well. So playing the 4-drop over the 3-drop is... Ugh, oh, no, more Teferis. Goodbye, Ingenious Infiltrator. Now, our opponent has given us the business over there. All right, it was the right play last time. Maybe it's the right play this time. I don't think we're trying to blow up the Bowmasters or anything right now. Instant Speed Ponder. What a spell. All right, we're in with the Infiltrator. That's something. Triumph of St. Catherine. You know what doesn't kill that? Fatal push. Yikes. Yeah, so our opponent is running like the the sort of Esper control style build by the look of it. That we played something similar to quite a while back, like pre modern horizons. We played a Leyline Dowser build, I think, that was really good. But I am very partial to a Leyline Dowser. So we're going to need to push this Bowmasters and then shoulders edict this triumph. That is asking a lot. So what you often find with ninja decks is they end up struggling when your opponent starts playing some slightly bigger creatures. Because you kind of need to get your little guys through here and there. And if we can't do that, then we're in trouble. If we're just getting uh, roadblocked by... Well, 5-5 five, five lifelinks is quite the roadblock. All right. Come on, deck, I believe. Psychic Frog. That does do some things for us. Out the frog that can fly over, can play out the Yuriko now and just try and have lots of card draw and damage for next turn. Um, I think we're going to want a swamp here based on the amount of removal we're likely to want to fire off soon. So we can play this out right now, but I don't think we are required to do that. We may need it for psychic frog reasons. I'm not going to play out and try and fail push now. Our opponent's already shown us days. We don't need to play into that. Oh, are we going to beat two Triumph of St. Catherine? Outlook, not good. Mm, what is our realistic solution? Like, the frog can be bigger, but not right away. So I think we take five this turn. Plan to kill the Teferi is looking a little bit awkward. Mm, Teferi can just bounce. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to scoop it to that. All right, our opponent is a little bit bigger than us, which is not ideal. We need a Shoulders Edict. Uh, back to Basics looks pretty good here. 
Uh, Flutterstorm maybe is useful sometimes. Snuff Out does look good though. Uh, the pushes for enemy bowmasters does feel like a thing we need to be looking out for. Our own bowmasters look pretty good. Our plan of drawing a bunch of cards and countering these massive yachts has to be a thing that we are keeping in mind. I don't think we want the bounce spell here. We want the hard cap, the hard removal. This is part of our mana base. The sink into stupid. I'm, I'm reluctant to board that one out. I think with a lot of removal running around, it might be a bit tricky to get some of our ninja stuff going. So we're probably just going to trim on the cuter stuff here. Like this still gives us four ways of putting these in, and we've also got the bowmasters. That's reasonable enough. Do you want this fluster storm to try and make our back to basic stick? I don't think that's necessary, but something we could do. Uh, yep, Tamio is a very strong Magic the Gathering card. I was not convinced by this for quite some time, but I think in a shell like ours, it is a very strong card. I think in the slower shells that have the time to leverage the clues, it looks very strong to me. It was just something that wasn't on. The backside of it, I'm not a big lover of. Like, it can do stuff, but the backside of it is kind of like... It sits there and does nothing for a few turns, and then maybe you win the game. Whereas if you had any, like threat in a tempo deck instead of this then you'd just be winning the game anyway are we doing this again are we are we fighting over this i think so i think i am willing to force of will this though and i think i'm going to pitch the sink into stupor quite a big fight for this one if we can find a brainstorm and start taking this up that might be good enough though although teferi does exist and can bounce it all right, card advantage, go. Every time we can turn this Tamiyo sideways, it's gonna be big news for us. If they got another plow though, then not feeling great about that. Go to attacks. So there's a tension between trying to play around with Bowmasters and trying to get our clue going. But we have the days I don't mind burning on the Bowmasters. I have to imagine this underground sea is coming into play now. There it is. Pest control. We very much want our spell to resolve. So we're going to hold open this mana to pay around opposing dazes. We don't want to lose all of these. Yeah, that pest control could have been savage. We're not actually dealing any damage to our opponent. So we are like drawing a bunch of cards and giving ourselves more resources to work with. But that is not the same thing as pressuring our opponent winning the game. So we've got Brainstorm, or we've got a Clue Token. Or we've got the Bowmasters, or we've got the Shoulders Edict. Am I just firing off a Bowmasters here into what is very clearly our opponent's Bowmasters? I don't think so. If it was a Brainstorm, maybe more likely, but I'd rather just hold my options available. They did not shuffle off that Ponder. Okay, so now we've got a prismatic ending. So, what is this? Um, exile her, then return her. So if we brainstorm now, this will counterspell the prismatic ending. Uh, which of these do we not want just yet? Uh, I think we do want the Merc Tide. Don't really need the removal spells just yet, do we? We definitely don't want the Eureka, actually. Just goes away. Prismatic ending fizzles. And I feel pretty good about that one. A ponder. Sure. They shuffled this time. We're drawing a fatal push this turn. I think I would like to have a Merktide region in play. A daze. Um, I would very much like to daze this because we then get our land back. So that gives us fatal push. So we've got a little bubble where our opponent's creatures are going to be smaller if they attack us for a turn. That seems very unlikely to matter here. A wasteland. It's certainly an annoying one. A Bowmasters, that's also annoying. They're going to ping the Tamiya. Sure. Does our opponent want to wasteland us? They do. I would like to fatal push this Bowmasters, please. A land that casts Bowmasters would be nice. Oh, it's the Eureka, isn't it? We knew it was the Eureka. 
All right, this will shrink their guy when it attacks anyway. Because Underground Sea being in our deck. Blah. Well, we, we've seen the pros and cons of having the non-basics and the basics, right? So we definitely had some hands that we could have kept if they had non-basics in. And um, we've obviously been wasted off one of... Or off of 50% of our lands, in fact. So this can attack. It don't, doesn't do anything, so our opponent's not going to bother. No additional Bowmaster. We need to be careful about our opponent's own Bowmasters if we try and draw half of our deck. All right, we just got there. Okay. Would I like to do anything differently? Honestly, that felt pretty good. We've got five ninjas to proc off of our four-ish things, but Tamiyo can just do the job on its own. Days does get worse here. So maybe I'll trade a Days for Flusterstorm. Um, sure, we'll call it. All right, we still had some spare clues at the end of that game. Island Ponder, the classic. Uh, this seems reasonable. We have an answer for something really problematic. We have the ability to dig towards a better game plan, fling up our graveyard for a Merc Tide. Could be an Island Ponder from our opponent. Yep. All the Ponders. Okay, so we're going to get ourselves a basic island. Let's crack off this Ponder. Let's see what the future holds for us. Uh, Orchard Bowmasters I like quite a lot, as I like the Fatal Push too. So I think we can put them in this order is fine. Print hasn't shown us hand disruption. I would rather keep the push safe, I think, because that can answer a Psychic Frog. We haven't seen like the whole sort of griefy type plan here, have we? I don't think that was this one. That was the previous round that had the griefs. Right, so here's the Psychic Frog. Let's... Is it the Ponder is a Eureka? Let's get rid of a Ponder. Say no to this. Oh wow, it just worked. That was unexpected. So now we have ourselves in one of those weird little spots where we want to cast this Bowmasters. But if our opponent has a Bowmasters, that becomes really bad. But if we wait, maybe we lose the opportunity to like properly snag Something our opponent has. Meticulous Archive. Okay, coming to play tap land is actually good for us there. It means they can't cantrip and bowmasters. I will play the bowmasters at end step if our opponent does nothing. Because I want the bodies to start doing ninja things with. You never want to be the first person to play the bowmaster in the bowmaster mirror. Force of will. Not one I'm unhappy to see. Let's attack. Which of these creatures would I most like to have in play right now? I want to deal slightly more damage. If they have a Bowmasters, that becomes kind of awkward. I think we just put in the Eureka. This isn't a card draw. It's just to put the card into your hand trigger. Okay, so we found a land. We can hold up a Fatal Push. I think I prefer that to Pondering, because Pondering is probably our blue card here. We can turn our Orc Army into a Ninja. I'm willing to take that. A Plow on our Eureka. Is that what I'm fighting over? I think it is. If we just get another round, if we get a round of both ninja triggers, then we should win the game off of that. That is some excessive card advantage that we can leverage. That is also our opponent's only white source. Right, there's a wasteland. That doesn't do anything. It's going to attacks. It was good last turn. It's going to be good this turn. We've got a fatal push for the Bowmasters. But if they had a Bowmasters, you'd probably want to put it in front of the guys here. A whole Breacher. Yes. Go and get Swamp. Oh, look at this. This is going to be beautiful. Oh, look at that. Four of your finest triggers, please. Because we don't have any additional manipulation, it doesn't really matter how we stack them here. But if we had a land open, we could maybe brainstorm and stack it for more damage. Sean sure, Edict. I will have this Ornithopter in play, please. Oh, that feels so good. We just drew four cards and doned our opponent for a little bit as well. Like, what, three damage I think we got for that? No, it's two damage, right? Trying for St. Catherine. Well, we have a Shoulder Z Dict. Now, our opponent has not been countering our spells that they very much would have liked to have countered. So I am pretty confident that we're going to be able to Edict this without issue. Love seeing the island here as well, actually. Sacrifice non token creature, please. An Orcish Bowmasters. Uh, we can let them have the Bowmasters and then just ping it down with our Bowmasters. 
They know we have this Bowmasters, though. Because they saw it ages ago and we picked it up. Alright, they've had enough. Uh, yeah, that felt really good. And what I will say about this deck is the games are really intricate and enjoyable for the most part. Alright, one round to go. We have got a 2-2 record. So we're on the way to a positive. Let's see if we can nail that positive down. Um, yeah, we can do some Eurico stuff. If that fails, we've got Psychic Frog. We're lacking a bit of protection, but we've just got lots of lots of threats. I'll play out this Ornithopter with an island. We can brainstorm in an emergency, try and look for Force of Will or Daze. But for the most part, we're just going to be doing Eurico things. All right, no into my end step. That fills me with a little bit of relief. Oh, we up against more of the uh, Esper control style stuff. Let's go attacks. We're doing the thing we have here. A stifle, you say. Very naughty. But that's a stifle that hasn't cost us anything. It, it's cost us a bit of tempo, but we've still got the same number of cards in hand. So our opponent is basically exchange a card for a little bit of reprieve of time. And if we can continue to, you know, leverage the fact our deck is all about drawing additional cards, then hopefully we can overcome what our opponent's got going. Um, I think I'll brainstorm here first. Okay, we'll get rid of one of these Eurocos. And is it a Psychic Frog? We don't want two Psychic Frogs, I don't think. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe we want to get rid of the Swamp, but I'd like having additional land. You know, relatively mana intensive spells. You got a stifle there, opponent? Or do we just get to connect? We get plowed. Am I fighting over this? Opponent's got four cards in hand. I think so. And I think we're going to keep the infiltrator around so that we can get the, uh, the double triggers. Because that is obviously pretty gnarly. The little ornithopter that could. Right, our opponent has had enough of Yuriko. Ponder from our opponent. So next turn we have Bowmasters and Ingenious Infiltrator as options. We're invalidating our opponent's Wasteland nicely. I don't think... I'm trying to think what we would play, what we'd have to draw that would change what we would play next turn. I think it more depends on what our opponent does. If they try and remove our creature... Okay, a Stoneforge Mystic. Alright, that is definitely a creature that is making me not want to play the Bowmasters first. Alright, a Cauldra complete. That is a pretty real card. So we need to try and deal with that. Alright, let's draw a card with our ninja. Can we get the damage in? An underground sea. That's not what we wanted, was it? We've we are kind of flooding out a little bit here. Players Ornithopter. We'll pass. Maybe we can snag a uh cantable sink for our opponent. And grow our bowmaster enough. Oh, our opponent's just conceded. What? Ah, they they left the game. What's going on there? Oh, they were just about to stick a cauldron. That's very odd to me. Maybe they have to go, and they're just going to be forfeit the matchup. But I think we need to play properly. So we're basically looking at Esper Stone Blade here, uh, which usually means back to basics pretty good, like in the previous one. We're probably trimming on some of these less exciting things. They might have a Caracas. We can trim on this. And we'll probably trim a couple of daisies on the draw. That seems fine to me. We could play a Dress Down just to stop the Stone Forge when it comes in. We're just going to submit like this, I think. Until we see a little bit more of our opponent's deck. Alright, we've got Tamio, which is a pretty good piece for what we're trying to work with here. We've also got a little bit of removal that we can leverage. I wonder why our opponent conceded that previous game. What did I miss? A thought siege. I don't think this is worth fighting over. Like, both the Psychic Frog and the Tamiya are worth taking for our opponent. Or if they're trying to force something really spooky through, the Force of Will becomes a thing. And if they're putting card in our graveyard, it does make our murderous cut slightly easier to cast down the road. So, Ponder is our blue card for the Force of Will. Right, we've now drawn another blue card for Force of Will. So I'm okay to cast this Ponder. Force of Negation pitching a Brainstorm. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. Wasteland. I care not for your Wasteland opponent. 
I do care about your stifle, though. We'll fight over this. We'll just stifle just to him to Turak, which is pretty good. Uh, get Swamp. Play the backup frog. Force of Will. Alright, our opponent is Hellbent with Underground Sea and Wasteland. Our opponent has taken some pretty aggressive lines. And their hand didn't really do anything. It was just purely reactive. Which is an interesting keep. Maybe it tells me a little bit about their deck. Uh, we play this for brainstorm purposes. So the thing it could tell us about our opponent's deck is that their deck is designed to play the long game and they don't really care about trading heavily like this as long as they can make it to the mid to late game. And they'll eventually be able to win. But they certainly changed things so our game is going to be a bit weird. Alright, we're just going to keep passing. we got forcible blue card, we got snuff out, we got murderous cut. We have lots of reaction now. Meticulous Archive. Yep, kind of wish we had some, like, the, the two non-basics we have in our deck. If one of them was at least an under six sewers, that would be better. A thought sees. Sure, be my guest. Two answers to your threat. A counter spell for something scary. I take the Infiltrator. That maybe tells us that our opponent doesn't have any removal. Or their plan is to just remove everything we do. I will ponder here. We're just looking for a threat. These are not threats. This is an any order and a shuffle. Underground sea into our opponent's wasteland is not what I call a good time. We can use it to bait out the wasteland if we want to try and reduce our opponent's total amount of mana, if we think that's relevant. For like hard casting triumph from St. Catherine. Back to basics, you say. That is something I am interested in doing. But I want our opponent to tap down first, I think, here. So you do that so our opponent has less land, so they're more likely to tap down their coloured sources. Ah, come on. A Misty Rainforest. We will play that out. This unlocks four drops from our deck, like the Ingenious Infiltrator, Hardcast on the Stuff Out. Another land gives us Hardcast Force of Will. We're just trying to bait our opponent out, because if they have Prismatic Ending, they can just Ending this. Right, so we've got Hardcast Force of Will now. And hardcast murderous cut. What a weird little game. A bow masters. How do I feel about a bow masters? They got any stifles over there? They do have a stifle. There's the other card, a stifle as well. Sure, you can have a bow masters. We can just cut it down later, or hopefully just ignore it. But we'll see. We want our opponent to tap these lands and let us get this back to basics down. Ponder. Okay. So I like ponder into using both your colored sources to make a Stoneforge Mystic that we then snuff out. That would feel pretty good. We will take this damage now. I'll crack this at end steps to see if our opponent wants to stifle. I did not stifle. All right, back to basics. Let's go. We can defend this. Force of negation. Pow. They, they conveniently tap down all their lands for me. Now we just need to win around this Bowmasters. Our opponent probably has very few basics in their deck. What a weird, weird game this has been. Okay, I think I'm okay to take this this turn. And then we have to get... Okay, okay Ornithopter. The biggest toughness in the game right now. This saves us quite a bit of damage. All right, <laughs> our opponent's had enough. The almighty Ornithopter was king. All right, so we did finish with a positive record in the end. So we got 2-0, a 2-1, a 2-0, a 1-2, and a 1-2. So the two rounds we lost, we did actually take games off of our opponent and they didn't feel like completely unwinnable. I think the Oopsal spells match up. If we'd have counterspelled with our days on their Underseat Informer instead of trying to hold out for um, like a Belcher or, you know, something else thinking that maybe we could answer the way they're trying to answer our permanence. But I wasn't really expecting the money Black deck to be killing our thing. But that's on me, I think. So, this could have been a 4-1. Let's talk about this deck. So, the first thing I have to mention. We are going out of our way to try and play Ingenious Infiltrator and Yuriko. And these cards are basically worse versions of Psychic Frog that we have to jump through hoops for. Now, that's not necessarily saying these cards are terrible. That's saying that Psychic Frog is absolutely bananas, and I do not expect this to survive in, as a legacy card for very long until it gets banned. This card is absolutely 
uh, pushed beyond belief. So I'm not uh, I'm not necessarily throwing shade on these, but you know sometimes it's better to work smarter than it's harder, and it is kind of hard getting these to go. What I will say though is Tamio in this deck impressed me quite a lot. So we want a creature that we can play for one mana that does stuff. And this most assuredly does stuff, right? This gets us jabbing away at our opponent, getting some card advantage off of the clue tokens. And sometimes we can flip it and that can be a threat that can pressure our opponent in certain ways. So I don't hate that. Um, it certainly looks a lot better than a one mana one one that can't be blocked. But what I will say about the one mana one one that can't be blocked is the, I can't remember what it's called, like Moon Glove Changeling or something Changeling. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a Changeling, so it's a ninja, which means that when you have these out, you have this unblockable creature that is going to trigger both of these every time. That is something I do like, and I kind of miss a little bit. But I think Tamio is quite a big upgrade for this deck. And I don't really like Tamio in, like, tempo decks, but we're not really, strictly speaking, a tempo deck. We are a overwhelming card advantage whilst chipping away deck. So we have some things in common with tempo decks, but we're not um, trying to sort of expend all of our last resources on like the last turn to make sure the game's over sort of thing. We're just trying to absolutely bury our opponents with card advantage. But we do, you know, we do still have tempo game plans evolving Frog and Merc Tide and stuff and just clocking our opponent. Ornithopter, obviously this card is bad, but it is so useful to what we're doing and having a bunch of stuff that doesn't die to Bowmasters is also quite nice if you're on the draw, your opponent can sometimes just go, okay, I'll play my Bowmasters, kill your 1-1 if you're playing the 1-1. So we kind of get to ignore that here. So that's pretty intriguing to me. Even though Ornithopter does feel somewhat lackluster as a card. But when you get like have this on turn 1, and then turn 2 you put this in, then replay it, turn 3 you play this, you feel like an absolute god and you're just smashing everyone. I was worried that we didn't have enough removal, but it did feel like we had just about enough with the Bowmasters chipping in a little bit. And we, like I said, we got some in the sideboard, and that is going to be pretty handy too. I don't like the dual lands in this deck. I think one of them should be an Undercity Sewers. I'm not even sure we need two of these because we are so deep on basics. Now, we did obviously get to some situations where we couldn't keep a hand because it had basics in. And we had to throw it back because we had a Swamp when we were trying to cast Blue Spells. That is going to happen, but I'm pretty sure we won that game. Um, and, you know, we did all right with it. It's just a, it's a downside of your deck building, but having a load of non-basics has a downside too because you're going to get waste standard. Being able to blank opponents' waste lands is really nice. I also am a big fan of just not playing the whole wasteland thing because, like I said, we are not, strictly speaking, a tempo deck. We're just trying to get our engine set up, using dazes to protect it while we get it set up. And then once it starts rolling, we just sort of bury our opponent by having all this card advantage. So we're going to have all these removal spells. We're going to be able to cantrip into the things we need, have our counter spells popping off, and that feels pretty good. And Psychic Frog is a great thing to do if you're drawing lots of bonus cards, because you just make an unassailable yacht. Uh, yeah, pretty happy about that. And we also have the Psychic Frog Motide Regent combo, where we just exile a bunch of cards and then the Regent grows. Yeah, that deck feels pretty reasonable. I'd also like Borrower in Ninja decks because you can then return this with a ninja at some point and then get another bounce. So there's lots of like really cool little interactions in this deck that you maybe don't see on a first glance. And there's a lot of play to it. I will say Ninjas is certainly not the best blue-black deck. Is it in the top three blue-black decks? No, it's not. There's so many good blue-black decks in Legacy. But this deck has a lot of play to it and it's really enjoyable. And it has a lot of ability to generate card advantage, which is something that is quite good when people are trying to poke holes in your hand. So, you know, there's definitely a spot for it. I'm not expecting this deck to be like winning challenges all the time. But if somebody top eight is challenging me, oh, that's cool. But I'm looking at it and it's like, yeah, it does play good cards and it's got a good engine. It's not a million miles away out of something that I would expect. But the question is, why play the ninjas when you could just play like the whole frog thing? Maybe... Um, if you go back and watch a video I recorded a week or two ago, it was a blue-black mid-range deck that was running like Tamio, Psychic Frog, I think it was Merc Tide maybe, uh, and Bowmasters, and it had a lot more interaction with the opponent, but it still had that game plan of, okay, we're going to be drawing a card every turn, trading one for one with you, and then winning the game that way. And that felt really strong, and it kind of felt like what we're doing here, 
Now this can be a little bit more explosive and it can draw a whole lot more cards in a short space of time. But that deck obviously had a lot more interaction and wasn't trying to play synergies, was just like a good stuff deck. I prefer playing synergy decks, I find them really fascinating and they're really cool things sort of getting everything lined up. It's the combo player in me that likes having our bits and pieces lined up. But I think the good stuff deck is probably just a better version of what we're doing here. But I don't think that invalidates this as a deck that you can play. Um, I like the back to basics in the sideboard. I think you could definitely make some tweaks to this deck. But honestly, I would be happy to run this back. It's a really enjoyable deck to play and there's lots of push and pull to it. So I definitely recommend giving it a go if you've got the cards. Uh, you won't be disappointed. It is, as you could see, you know, a lot of the games we had were really intricate, lots of back and forth. I did dither a little bit in the Death and Taxes round, so maybe we could have won that one as well. So maybe the two losses we had, we could have actually won if we played a little bit differently. But I think it was worth talking over all the plays I was doing, because like I said, there's so many plays in this deck. And yeah, we may have run out of clock, but I hope I at least entertained you on that round, because there was quite a lot to talk about since it was like a long, drawn-out fair matchup. All right, I think I've rambled about this one quite enough, and I hope the donor is pleased with how it performed. I'm always interested to see ninja stuff going on because it is just a, a really fun thing you can do and shows the, the depth of the blue-black card pool that you can pull out, like, you know, a dozen different blue-black decks that are all pretty viable. And some of them are too viable, to be honest. All right, thank you so much for watching this one. If you would like a donation deck on the channel, please get in touch. And members of my Patreon do get discounts on their donation decks as well so you could become a member for as little as two pounds a month and i'll get you a discount donation deck if you want it for the channel and it helps me out and it lets me see what you lovely people are working on all right thank you so much for watching and goodbye if you'd like to support me in the channel please check out my patreon it has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support a low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed Turbo Depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.